Hello everyone, welcome to Dental Mate. Today in this video, we'll be talking about fibrous dysplasia. Let's get started. So, fibrous dysplasia, it is a disease of bone. Now, why is it called fibrous dysplasia? Because it is characterized by fibers. And dysplasia is there is abnormal growth and differentiation. So, what is fibrous dysplasia? It is an uncommon non-hereditary developmental tumor-like condition. Non-hereditary developmental tumor-like condition which is characterized by it is characterized by replacement of normal bone so here see this is a non hereditary condition presence by birth it is it forms a tumor like growth it is characterized by replacement of the normal bone by an excessive proliferation of cellular fibrous connective tissue now this connective tissue is intermixed with irregular bony trabeculae okay so uh, with this definition we can uh, we have a like idea of what are the features that would be seen in fibrous dysplasia it is a tumor like condition developmental and non hereditary uncommon okay what happens is there is replacement of normal bone now what all things replaces the normal bones excessive poly proliferation of cellular fibrous connective tissue now this fibrous connective tissue it is mixed with irregular bony trabeculae now how does this occur what is the etiopathogenesis of fibrous dysplasia so what happens is we have a gene which is situated in the long arm of chromosome number 20 this gene is known as GNAS1 this the full form is guanine nucleotide binding protein alpha stimulating activity polypeptide 1 okay this is known as the gnas1 gene which is situated in the long arm of chromosome number 20 this is the guanine nucleotide binding protein alpha stimulating activity polypeptide 1 now there occurs so this gene basically encodes for the g protein okay now there occurs post zygotic missense mutation in this gene okay and because of which there is excessive or increased production of the g protein so there is basically what happens there is a post zygotic missense mutation in the gnas1 gene which is situated in the long arm of chromosome number 20 which encodes for g protein because of this mutation there is excessive or increased production of the g protein now these dna changes they are acquired from the zygote stage onwards throughout the lifespan okay due to this due to the increased activation of the g protein there is overproduction of cyclic amp now this overproduction or overproduced cyclic amp it hops in the body what does it do there is hyperfunction of the affected endocrine glands along with that there is effect on the differentiation of the odontoblasts and there is proliferation of the melanocytes so what is the etiopathogenesis of fibrous dysplasia there occurs a post zygotic missense mutation in the gnas1 gene which is situated in the long arm of chromosome number 20 which encodes for g protein because of this missense post zygotic mutation there occurs increased activation of the g protein leading to overproduction of the cyclic amp this cyclic amp hops over the body what does it do it leads to hyperfunction of the affected endocrine gland there it also leads to the uh, it also affects the differentiation of the odontoblast and it also leads to excessive proliferation of the melanocytes okay 
Now next if we talk about the clinical features of fibrous dysplasia, clinically it could be divided into three types that is monoostotic fibrous dysplasia, polyostotic fibrous dysplasia and the last one is craniofacial fibrous dysplasia. The monoostotic fibrous dysplasia, mono means single one and ostotic means bone formation. So the uh, monoostotic means condition which is involving single type of uh, which is affecting one bone formation any one. Polyostotic means when the bone formation of two or more bones are affected and the third type is the craniofacial fibrous dysplasia. First of all, we'll be discussing about the monoostotic fibrous dysplasia. Here the disease is limited to a single bone. The bones involved could be rib, femur, tibia, craniofacial bones or humerus. Okay, now this is more common it has no gentle predilections. It uh, it could be like it is seen in the same amount or in the same uh, percentage as seen in males and females. It is more common in the second decade of life that is 10 to 19 years and there is a painless swelling on the affected area which is seen. So this is the monoostotic fibrous dysplasia. After that, if we talk about the polyostotic fibrous dysplasia, in the polyostotic fibrous dysplasia, there is involvement of two or more bones. Along with that, what are the sites that could be seen? It is femur, tibia, pelvis, ribs, skull and facial bones, upper extremities, lumbar spine, clavicle and cervical spine. It could be unilateral or bilateral affecting any one side or both the sides of the body. Now here the skeletal manifestations are seen. What is the skeletal manifestation? There is a shepherd crook deformity. So this is the shepherd crook and this kind of deformity is seen in the polyostotic fibrous dysplasia. So what happens is there is curvature of the femoral neck and the proximal shaft. This is a pathognomic feature or the diagnosing feature of fibrous dysplasia. There is curvature of the femoral neck and the proximal shaft leading to the shepherd crook deformity. It also has certain extra skeletal manifestations. See, this is the shepherd crook deformity seen in fibrous dysplasia. Now, this also has certain extra skeletal manifestations, which is so that was the skeletal manifestation that we have seen which was uh, uh, found in the fibrous dysplasia. It also has a extra skeletal manifestation which is the cutaneous pigmentation which is seen. See we have seen that the overproduced cyclic AMP it hops in the body from P it was pr uh, production of melanocytes. So this correlates with another uh, um, presentation of polyostotic fibrous dysplasia which is cutaneous pigmentation here there are pigmented macules that are present okay these are known as cafe olet spots why are they called as cafe olet they represent coffee with milk see something of this kind therefore they are known as cafe olet spots now these cafe olet spots if you remember they are seen also in neurofibromatosis okay So how would we differentiate whether, how would we differentiate just looking on the extraskeletal manifestation, whether it is a fibrous dysplasia or neurofibromatosis. See what happens is in fibrous dysplasia, there are the margins of the caffeolid spots. These margins of the caffeolid spots, they are jagged, okay, or round, they are jagged means they are irregular, okay. The margins in the cafeolid uh, cafe spot of fibrous dysplasia are jagged or irregular, whereas the regular margins are present in the cafeolid spots of neurofibromatosis. Along with that, these irregular margins of the fibrous dysplasia, they are seemed or they are called to resemble the coastline of Maine. Okay. See, jagged borders. So these caffeolid spots of fibrous dysplasia are, so, are uh, known to remember the coastline of Maine. They are compared to the coastline of Maine. Along with that, these lines, they never cross the midline. They would be present ipsilateral 
only on one side they would never cross midline but the uh, uh, caffeolid spots which are seen in the neurofibromatosis they have round edges they are present they cross the midline present on both the sides along with that they are like the coast of california okay smooth with smooth borders so they are compared to the coast of california for neurofibromatosis coast of california and for fibrous dysplasia they are known they are compared with coastline of maine okay now next the fibrous dysplasia it can have uh, it can be seen associated with a triad of bone defect okay what are the triad fibrous dysplasia along with caffeolid spots along with certain endocrine dis uh, disturbances which is precocious puberty hyperthyroidism adrenal disorders diabetes hyperpituitarism and hypercalcemia okay so fibrous dysplasia associated with a triad of bone bone defects that is fibrous dysplasia along with caffeolid spots and certain endocrine disturbances which would include precocious puberty hyperthyroidism adrenal disorders diabetes hyperpituitarism and hypercalcemia these are known as this this forms the mccune albright syndrome now these triad that is fibrous dysplasia caffeolid spot and endocrine disturbances such as precocious puberty hyperthyroidism adrenal disorders diabetes hyperpituitarism and hypercalcemia are known as the albright triad now next is the fibrous dysplasia along with the caffeolid spot okay if fibrous dysplasia is present and only caffeolid spots are seen this is known as jaffe's type of fibrous dysplasia okay sometimes fibrous dysplasia is seen associated with intramuscular myxoma so this forms the mazebrad syndrome we have three mccune albright syndrome the jaffe's type of fibrous dysplasia and mazebrad syndrome so if fibrous dysplasia associated with only caffeolid spo caffeolid spots jaffe's type fibrous dysplasia caffeolid spot and the endocrine disturbances mccune albright syndrome fibrous dysplasia with intramuscular myxoma no caffeolid spots then it is the it is known as the mazebrad syndrome next is the craniofacial fibrous dysplasia which we have seen is a third type of clinical manifestation so this could be either monoostotic or polyostotic it mo it is the mostly affected bones are maxilla frontal bone zygoma sphenoid and the ethmoidal bone and when the maxilla and the associated bones are affected it gives a lion type of appearance or the leonine appearance therefore it is known as leontiosis ossea leontiasis ossea so if the maxilla and the associated bones that is frontal zygoma sphenoid ethmoidal they are affected this gives an appearance of a leon it, it gives a leonine appearance so this type of fibrous dysplasia is known as leontiosis leontiasis ossea so what are the clinical features there is painless jaw swelling the lips are incompetent along with that see these are the oral manifestations basically which are seen in fibrous dysplasia okay so there is a jaw swelling painless or painless swelling or the bulging of the jaw is seen along with that the lips are incompetent then it is more severe in maxilla and in children most commonly seen in maxilla and in children so along with that there is frequent buccal cortical plate expansion with intact gingiva so but a buccal cortical plate expands with an intact overlying gingiva okay now next if we talk about the radiographic features of fibrous dysplasia then a radiolucent lesion is seen in the bone which is affected along with that there is a destructive lesion in the diaphysis and the 
metaphysis which is seen okay there is a so the normal trabeculate pattern is completely lost here resulting in the scalloping of the endoosteal bone okay and there is extreme thickening of the cortex so this thickened sclerotic border with a radiolucent lesion so this thickened sclerotic border is known as rind sign okay what is rind sign thickened sclerotic border with a radiolucent lesion seen in fibrous dysplasia is known as rind sign see here it is more clearly appreciable okay now how uh, how does this disease progress see in the early lesion there is uniform unilocular radiolucency which is seen uniform radio unilocular radiolucency and the normal bony trabeculate pattern is seen in the early lesions after that there are small multi uh, multilocular radiolucent lesions bahut sare chote chote lesions lesions honge with well defined border and fine bony trabeculae along with that there is an increase in the trabeculation with more radio opaque lesions okay so now we have more number of radio opaque lesions and increased number of trabeculations because of these increased trabeculations ground glass cotton wool or the orange peel appearance is seen see this is the cotton wool appearance can we see this is because of the radio opacity that is overgrowth of the bone so ground glass this could be regarded as ground glass cotton wool or the orange peel appearance along with that there is expansion of the buccal cortical plate which can be seen see next if we talk about the histopathological features which are seen in the fibrous dysplasia so first of all there are irregular shaped trabeculae with immature or woven bone in the cellular in a cellular loosely arranged fibrous dysplasia see these are the irregular shaped woven bony trabeculae and there is a loose cellular fibrous stroma which is present these trabeculae irregular and woven that is immature they are dispersed in these loose cellular fibrous stroma these trabeculae they are not connected to each other and they assume a curvilinear shape therefore they are known as the chinese letter letter pattern so the chinese letter pattern is a classic histopathological feature which is seen in fibrous dysplasia now these uh, uh, bony trabeculae the immature woven bony trabeculae they arise by metaplasia okay these bony trabeculae they are arising by metaplasia and they are like not surrounded by the plump of a positional osteoblast like the normal bony trabeculae okay some certain in histopathological feature along with these certain calcified spherules can also be seen there is no capsule or line demarcation between the normal and the lesional bone and there could be intervening fibrous connective tissue uh, with the mononuclear cells okay next if we talk about the treatment of fibrous dysplasia so it is a, a self limiting disease and it ceases to grow when the patient re reaches puberty for the monoosteotic type of fibrous dysplasia cosmetic surgeries cosmetic surgeries can be opted for such as optical canal de decompression if the surgery is con contraindicated then vitamin d and bisphosphonate therapy can be given to the patient along with that the polyosteotic fibrous dysplasia it requires a multidisciplinary approach next if we talk about the malignancy potential it is 0.4% for monoosteotic 4% around 4% for the polyosteotic type and the malignancies which are reported subsequent to the fibrous dysplasia could be osteosarcoma fibrosarcoma chondrosarcoma malignant fibrous histiocytoma so if we revise what all what all things we have studied or the classic features which are present in fibrous dysplasia see this is a self limiting non hereditary disorder first of all what happens is the gene which is affected in fibrous dysplasia it is present in the long arm of chromosome number 
This gene is a GNAS1 gene. This gene causes the production of G protein and G protein leads to the, it stimulates the production of cyclic AMP. Because of the over cyclic AMP, this overproduced cyclic AMP it hops in the body. What is the full form of hop? So there is hyperfunction of the affected endocrine glands. There is the osteoblasts differentiation, differentiation is affected and there is over proliferation of the melanocytes. The clinical features we have three forms monoostrotic, polyostrotic and craniofacial. See, um, we have seen what are the what are the, what all bones are affected in the polyostrotic type. A special feature is seen that is the shepherd crook deformity. What is shepherd crook deformity? Why does it occur? It resembles the shepherd crook. It occurs because there is a curvature of femoral neck and the proximal shaft. A curvature is seen in the femoral neck and the proximal shaft leading to the shepherd crook deformity. Along with that, cafe olive spots are seen. That is coffee dispersed within the milk. Cafe olive spots are also seen in neurofibromatosis, but in fibrous dysplasia, unilateral, not crossing the midline, resembling the coast of Maine. In neurofibromatosis, it is bilateral, ipsilateral. It is bilateral. It is present all over the body. It crosses the midline and resembling the coast of California. Why coast of California? Because it has smooth borders. Why coast of Maine? Because it has ragged or jagged borders. Okay. After that, it can have three types. It can be associated with, if the fibrous dysplasia is associated with only cafe olive spots, it is known as the Jeffy's type. Fibrous dysplasia, cafe olive spots and endocrine disturbances, water disturbances like hyperthyroidism, hyperpituitarism, hypercalcemia, precocious puberty, adrenal disorders and diabetes, etc. could be seen. It is known as the McCune Albright syndrome and this triad that is fibrous dysplasia, cafe olive spots and the endocrine disturbances is known as the Albright triad. Along with that, if fibrous dysplasia is present with, is seen with multiple intramuscular myxoma, which is more common in women, then this is known as the Mesabrot syndrome. Next, if we talk about the radiographic feature, then a classical rind, rind sign is seen. What is rind sign? It is the lucent, lucent lesion which has a thickened sclerotic border. Lucent lesion with thickened sclerotic border. It is a classical sign of fibrous dysplasia along with that cotton wool, ground glass or orange peel appearance can also be seen. Oral manifestations, we have seen there is bulging, there is uh, expansion of the buccal plate, incompetent lips, maligned teeth can be there. In histopathological features, a classical uh, feature that is seen is Chinese letter pattern. Why Chinese letter pattern is seen? Because the because of the irregularly shaped bony trabeculae of the immature bone. There is no oppositional, appositional osteoblasts which are seen here. Okay. Uh, treatment, if we look about, it is self-limiting and it ceases once the person has achieved puberty. This is it about fibrous dysplasia. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Do hit the bell icon if you don't want to miss any latest updates. Also, let me know in the comment section below if this video has helped you in any ways as this would boost me to make videos of even better versions for you all. Stay tuned. Keep watching. Thank you.